If you like reading comics, your collection is robust, but you haven't gotten round to reading Our Bones Dust, then it's like you're eating sandwiches, but only the crust, because Our Bones Dust is still, still, still a reading must. Howdy, I'm Kurt Williams, and today we're looking at issue two of Our Bones Dust by Ben Stenbeck. I already reviewed issue one and I loved it. I gave it a nine out of 10. You can go check out that video now. This is a really well done apocalyptic story that has aliens and cannibals and a weird creature hunting everybody through the desert. It's got tons of charm. The writing is superb, but where this comic really shines is the art. Stenbeck gives us tons of time to just drink in these gorgeous landscapes he provides. We've got all this well thought out and well aged wreckage that we see all over the place, like this fallen satellite that's so well done, or this valley that used to have a high highway in it probably and all the cars are still there under dust and rusting and the cars are all so convincingly drawn it looks like they've become part of the landscape over time and there's also this great bit with the cave with all the stalactites and stalagmites in it and it's drawn so well just look at the shadows on some of those stalactites and man I was just as excited as that alien is to see this awesome dead tree with all the massive roots growing everywhere that is sick. So the world building is just gorgeous. It's so fun to look at. The color palette makes everything pop in a way that's not overwhelming, but is very clear and very convincing. So even when we're just spending time following the unnamed main character around, it's fine because we get to see this beautiful landscape that's so well drawn. And because we spend so much time just living in the world, there's not a lot of plot that happens in this issue. The main boy is still being chased by a band of cannibals, and the cannibals and the boy are still being chased by this creepy, flesh-wearing, robot creature thing. And we've still got this kind-hearted alien who's still wandering around, just being awesome, really fun to listen to and look at. There's this scene where the boy finds a giant, I'm assuming mother lizard, and her babies, and I can't tell if he just thinks they're cute or if he wants to eat them. It would make more sense to me if he wants to eat them, but I think in this case he's just trying to show that he has a heart and he thinks they're cute. But then the mother lizard gets protective and they have to fight and the boy wins, and it doesn't look like he's too happy about that, but he still keeps one of her arms to eat later. And by the way, look at the shadowing on that arm, the shadowing between the fingers instead of drawing the fingers themselves. That is the decision of an experienced artist. My guess is that the intention for that scene is to give us time to mourn the loss of compassion and tenderness that this world no longer has, which is a really great moment to provide, but even if you don't get that out of the scene, there's still this great panel up top here where he's brandishing a knife and there's the blood splattering. That's a great panel regardless of how you feel about it. We also get to see the alien tag these cannibal humans because he's there to study them and he noticed that they took off their tags that he had previously put on them. So he trades them food in order to put tags on them, which seems like something they're used to because they know exactly how to take them off later. So it seems like a fair trade to them to get tagged for some good protein. There's this dog that keeps showing up and I'm not sure if he's gonna be important to the story or if he's supposed to be a metaphor for the state of humanity at this point or if he's part of some larger subplot where we gain the humanity in one of the characters. I don't know. You know, maybe I spoke too soon. There is quite a bit of plot in this story. It's just not very complicated. It's a very simple story, so we can have a lot of plot without it feeling busy, because there are two interactions in this issue between the nice alien that we like and the creepy creature that wears skin. And in that second encounter, we have this breathtaking image where the nice alien telekinetically lifts up this truck to throw at the creepy creature. And that is a beautiful image. Look at all the detail in there. That's a believable, rotted, rusted truck. And then the alien follows it up with his signature telekinetic block lifting move. He's going into a finish him type moment. And then we see, what is that, a freaking laser? And man, look at that action shot with all the lasers. That's crazy. And I'm not going to tell you what happens, but it really upset me because I'm so invested in this story. So I loved issue two of Our Bones Dust. It's just as good as the first issue. We did a lot of setup in the first issue. So now in the second issue, we can just let things play out. And it feels really natural. The pacing is great. I love all the imagery. Ben Stenbeck is really a master of his craft. There's not a single panel throughout this whole issue that I looked at and thought, yeah, that could have been done better. Because all the body language, all the establishing shots, all the composition is so fully realized. Even when there are small panels where plenty of artists have a hard time fitting in the necessary information, it doesn't feel small because you get everything you need. So I could talk about this issue all day, but really you should just go and buy it for yourself. This is a great series. I think I was lucky and this was the last copy they had at my comic shop, but if they don't have any at yours, just ask them to order more. Get a second printing. There's no shame in a second printing. So I'm giving issue two of Our Bones Dust an easy nine out of ten. Really great work. I can't wait for more. Did you read it?
What did you think?